Welcome back. All right, so two weeks ago, approximately two weeks ago, I made a video on which teams below the playoff line are going to be under pressure to make the playoffs and which ones might. So today I'm going to do this a little bit differently now that we're done the draft and that most of the big name free agents are off the board, right? You've still got some guys out there like Dumba, etc., Tatar, but really the, the, the game breakers of the ones that were on the free agent market, they've basically been, been taken up. And so it's a matter now of looking at, okay, so now that we've got things almost settled, we've got big trades that are likely to come between now and training camp. So it's just fun to look at the standings from last season. I enjoy looking at that and just debating which teams are going to probably fall off and which ones won't. And again, I don't have to necessarily get into, you know, which teams are going to finish above or below because that that video uh, got over 41,000 views. So I think most people who wanted to hear my opinion on that already have. Uh, now, Boston finished atop the league, of course, with 135 points. They improved by 28 points from the season before. They're not going to get 135 points again this coming season. I feel very confident in saying that. Everything fell their way during the regular season. It was a dream season that I enjoyed all the way through. Was I surprised they lost in the playoffs? No. And the reason being, I don't know how much better the Boston Bruins were uh, on paper than the team from the year before that lost in the first round against Carolina. Uh, I think they were maybe mildly better, but a lot better. Not really. So it was just a really great run they had. I do expect them to fall off this coming season by how much. It may depend on the, the return of Bergeron. Do they fall enough to miss the playoffs? As ridiculous as that sounds, we'll see, right? Like, it's just, it's a matter of Olmark played out of his mind. The puck was going their way the whole season. It absolutely can go the other way. And if it sounds like, you know, a 40-plus point drop is ridiculous, and I understand why anybody's going to say that, well, they, they won't drop that far, but it can happen. Uh, the Toronto Maple Leafs dropped by four points to 111. Maybe this is the year Toronto wins the division. And I, I say that, and I'm not saying that to be kidding or anything like that. This might be the year, the best chance Toronto has to win the division. Because you've got Boston, who should should fall off at least a bit, right? Because without Krejci and Bergeron, their, their center depth is suspect. Uh, and for Toronto, they already are 13 points ahead of where Tampa Bay finished last season. And Tampa Bay dropped by 12 points. So Tampa Bay, a team that won the Stanley Cup in 2020 and 2021. One thing to keep in mind with the Lightning, if you go and look through their history, they tend to have really good periods that are then followed all of a sudden by this quick retool, and then they're back. So they went through that retool, they got Stamkos, and all of a sudden they were really good again. Uh, after they won the Cup in 2004, they dropped off not long after and ended up outside the playoffs. Are we going to see Tampa go through this again? We could. Uh, they've definitely lost a lot of key guys from that cup run. They've still got the core there, but it's that depth that gets you over the hump in the playoffs. And again, dropping down to 98 points. They can't drop by another 12 points this coming season, or they will miss the playoffs. I don't think 86 points makes the playoffs in either conference. Uh, Carolina won their division with 113 points. That was a drop of three from the season before. I don't expect Carolina to drop off. I think they're going to be very good again. Uh, it, really honestly, I mean, they've kept their goaltending together, which kind of surprised me. I thought with Kachetkov's contract extension kicking in that he would be one of the top two, but maybe they go with a three goalie rotation to at least start the season. We'll see. And then you get to New Jersey. I had to wear devils because they improved by 49 points. So when we look at Boston and say, well, they've got 135 points, they're not going to drop by that much. Um, well, we didn't see New Jersey coming either, did we? New Jersey, the first team on the board with the green asterisk, meaning they made the playoffs when they missed the season before. 112 points. Would anybody be surprised if they got another 49 points? Yes, because that's physically impossible. Uh, that would take them to, well, it's not physically impossible. 161 points. Highly improbable they get 161 points. They would only be allowed to lose one game in regulation and one game in extra time. So... Probably not going 81-1, one and one, but we'll see. Prove me wrong, New Jersey. So the Devils, really good, solid young team. They had to fully, they're, they're in good shape. The Rangers, 107 points. They dropped by three. Uh, while there's a lot of discussion about the Rangers in the playoffs and what kind of a team they are, I, I think they're still a playoff team. I, I do. I think they're still going to be a playoff team. Um, one of five teams in the East that had 100, 100 or more points. And outside of fading late in the season, they had a really good shot at finishing first in the division. At points, it looked like they could. So for the Rangers, the Devils, and Carolina, are they the top three 
in that division again, I'm going to say that's very likely to be the case. And maybe New Jersey ends up winning the division. Maybe it's Carolina and the Rangers in the first round again next year. Uh, and I say again because they've met in the playoffs a couple of times in recent seasons. Then you got the Islanders, 93 points. They improved by nine to get back into the playoffs. But I do expect a lot of people to say, well, if there's a team in the East that's going to drop out, it's probably going to be the Islanders. And I say that because they they haven't made a lot of changes from last year. They basically brought most of the guys back. And while the Horvat contract gets gets trampled on a bunch, and I understand that, I think Horvat's an excellent faceoff player. He can play a lot of minutes. And if they start putting him in front of the net and giving him a chance of those tip shots he was getting in Vancouver, he can get those goals back. Uh, but I do expect the Islanders to be the team people watching this video would say, well, they're probably going to fall out. Florida, 92 points. They dropped by 30, but they went all the way to the Stanley Cup final. I don't see them dropping out necessarily. Uh, but why did they end up with 92 points? Now that they've got Maurice's system down, do they end up back in the 100-point the range plus... Uh, do we see them then jump past Tampa, potentially? Do they jump past Boston? Does Boston drop by 20? Florida rises by 20? That kind of thing. It's easy enough to see that happen in the East, right? So it'll be interesting to see if Florida bounces back from that 30-point drop last year. If that run to the final takes the gas out of them, do they have a slow start? Then you get to the other side of the board with Pittsburgh, who finished out of the playoffs. They were one point back. They dropped by 12 overall. They have no cap space. So with the teams that finished below the playoffs, I thought, well, look at the cap space part too. There isn't any cap space right now for Pittsburgh. LTIR is going to change this for some teams, but during the during their offseason, of course, you don't necessarily need to use it. Riley Smith uh, should be a solid addition for Pittsburgh. Uh, then as free agents, they they sign Graves, they sign Eller. So they're, they're approaching this like they're close, right? and that they only need to make some additions here and they should be right back in the playoffs. And while it may look like they're making the wrong decision, when you're only two points back of the Islanders and it's an 82-game schedule, you're not wrong to say you're not far off and and maybe a couple of little changes will make a big difference. Buffalo, 91 points. They were one point back. They improved by 16 points from the year before. So an improvement by another, say, 10 points, and Buffalo is a playoff team. Uh, Clifton's been added. John, Eric Johnson's been added on the blue line. Uh, it's been 12 years since Buffalo made the playoffs. They still have $6,713,930 in cap space, as I mentioned in the video this morning. Uh, of course, they have to sign Darlene. They have to sign Power for next year. Those guys are both absolute rocks on the blue line. And so we'll see. Buffalo's got all of the makings of a team that could make the playoffs. Uh, for Ottawa, uh, they, have, they had 86 points this past season, improved by 13. Corpusell is the big addition. And, of course, Dabrinkit, where is he going? We don't know. Uh, do they bring him back for one year and try to talk him into sticking around? So it's been six years since the Sens made the playoffs. Uh, they have $7,532,620 in cap space. But Dabrinkit, of course, just looming out there as an RFA. And what are they going to do and what will that do to their cap space whenever they do what's going to get done? Uh, because if if Dabrinkit ends up signing a, a big contract, uh, which he could just accept the qualifying offer and say, fine, I'll just take that and, and go, um, they don't have any cap space. Uh, the Detroit Red Wings, 80 points for them this season. It was only a six-point improvement, which is a little deceptive because, of course, they sold at the deadline and just absolutely fell apart after that. They've added Confer, they've added Goss to spare, Hall and Reimer in free agency. They added Costin in that trade from the Oilers as well. Uh, six-point improvement doesn't sound like a lot. Another six-point improvement, they still don't make the playoffs. It's been seven years since Detroit made the playoffs. They currently show us having $13,537,000. In $777 in cap space. So while, yes, I understand that some of these contracts that got signed, people get mad about, and I, I get it, the reality is Detroit has cap space. They can afford to spend a little bit more to entice free agents right now than they might otherwise need to. And I'm guessing Eiserman's going to bank on the idea that they'll get better, they'll get onto this side of the ledger, and then they can get guys to come and sign for Detroit, sign in Detroit for a little bit less. So Detroit, I, I don't know if they have enough to get over here, but they're only 12 points back which is a dramatic improvement from how things were the year before. Washington, 80 points for them as well, a drop of 20. They hadn't even 100 the year before. Pacioretty, if he can stay healthy, gives them goals. Edmondson on the blue line might steady things. They don't have a lot of cap space, $888,333. So it'll be interesting to see with the caps what ends up happening there. 
Uh, again, all 32 teams, I'm going to go through videos like I did on the Buffalo one this morning, like I've been doing with teams. So I know people are like, when are you going to do this team and that team? I just kind of go with a random order to begin with. So yeah, Pacioretty is an interesting addition. The Caps, I, I, I don't know if I can see them getting back in, but they've only been out for the one year. It's Pittsburgh and Washington that fell out. Uh, maybe they can recover and get back in, right? We shall see. Philadelphia, 75 points, which was an improvement of 14 from the year before. Uh, they just avoided those really long losing streaks. Hathaway added in free agency. Of course, in the, the trade they made with the Kings, they added Peterson, they added Walker. Uh, they've been outside the playoffs for three years. Their cap space currently showing is $5,497,905. So picking up Cal Peterson, they're betting on him having a bounce back year. Peterson and Hart isn't an awful tandem, but uh, Philadelphia has made it clear they're still rebuilding uh, by officially actually entering a rebuild. So do they get 75 points next year? Maybe in that range, right? Uh, maybe a little bit better, depending on what happens with the goaltending and on the defensive side, but in general, uh, probably going to be around the same. Montreal, 68 points for them, which was an improvement of 13 from the year before. Uh, they added new hook in a trade. They don't have any cap space because, of course, Carey Price's money is still there. Uh, Price's contract is is going to just run out. I, I don't think he's going to come back. We haven't heard for sure that he won't play this coming season. Uh, we haven't heard that he's going to retire because, of course, he's still got a contract. He doesn't want to retire. So, and, and I understand that. I understand players wanting to just have the rest of the contract go, especially since it's an injury preventing him from playing. It's not that he doesn't want to be there. Uh, so Montreal is going to be an interesting one to watch only from a perspective of, you know, once he's on LTIR, they'd have money there if they wanted to spend it. Uh, and to round out the East is Columbus, 59 points for them, a drop of 22 from the year before. Severson and Provorov added on the blue line to improve things. It's been three years since they made the playoffs. $3,954,167 in cap space. So the East is going to be interesting because Columbus, some may pick them to, to kind of bounce back. And again, they're the one team that might be able to do what New Jersey did this year. I don't think it's that likely, but they've got Fantilli added. We'll see what happens. Uh, out West, you've got Colorado, who led the Central, ended up with 109 points, which was a drop of 10 the year before, from the year before. Uh, they did lose a bit in the offseason due to free agency and whatnot. We'll see what ends up happening with Colorado, but they should still be in contention. They're, of course, still odds on favorites to win the 2024 Stanley Cup. They only finished one point ahead of Dallas. So while Colorado dropped by 10 points to 109, Dallas improved by 10 points to 108. They added Duchesne. Dallas should be the favorites to win that division. And rightfully so. Dallas looks like a contender now. Adding Duchesne might be that last piece. Uh, against Vegas, things got kind of ugly there. But again, you know, each year is different. Maybe this is the year for Dallas. Minnesota, 103 points for them. They dropped by 10 points from the year before. So for Minnesota, a team that's been above the 100-point mark regularly, but in the playoffs is where things matter for Minnesota. Much like Toronto, Minnesota's in the same position. They absolutely have to win in the playoffs or it doesn't matter we're really into the into that period now where it just does not matter what happens during the regular season playoffs will dictate whether or not the season's seen as a success they could win the division and if they lose in the first round it's still seen as a failure uh vegas 111 points they missed the playoffs the year before but they improved by 17 points they also improved health wise and 111 points they they win their division so uh, a team that was beset by injuries and besieged by injuries the year before. Uh, still had injuries to deal with this past season, but they got through it and they won themselves they won themselves the Stanley Cup. Uh, they're not going to drop back out of the playoffs. Uh, the Oilers won't either. They improved by five points to 109. Uh, the Oilers are still a contender. I really do view them as a legit contender. I, I like the signing of Connor Brown. I think that was smart. Uh, the LA Kings are right there with them, 104 points. Also improved by five, so they stay five points apart. And this probably will be the top three in that division again. Um, I, I would be kind of surprised if anybody else busts in, although Seattle wasn't that far out. Seattle, 100 points, a 40-point improvement. Can they do it two years in a row? So when we talk about which teams that made the playoffs in the West are going to end up dropping out. So in the East, my, my pick that I think people are going to be deciding, well, they're not going to make the playoffs again next year, will be the Islanders. I think it'll be Seattle in the West, as well as Winnipeg. I think those two teams are going to be the ones that people say, okay, well... Probably not going to make it in this year. Uh, Seattle might be seen as a flash in the pan. It might be, well, they got hot at the right time. All that kind of stuff. For Winnipeg, 
uh, who improved by six points to get into the playoffs with 95. Just the turmoil. It's going to depend on what they get for Hellebuck. It's going to depend on what they get for Shifley if those guys get moved. And that's become an if because we have so many teams at the cap. We have so many teams that are pretty much done. And so getting major trades made right now might be more difficult. So the Jets are in an interesting position, probably favored to fall out. Calgary might be a team favored to jump back in, depending on what happens with the players they have that may end up being moved and all that fun stuff. What's interesting, of course, to me is that Winnipeg and Calgary and Alex Dabrinkit are getting all the attention for guys don't want to play in Canada. Meanwhile, Toronto signing players. Uh, Vancouver hasn't had any problems signing players. Uh, Calgary uh, has had its issues. Edmonton has not. And Edmonton's farther north and much colder than Calgary. So uh, it really is a matter of public perception. And I think with Calgary and Winnipeg, they're seen as being teams that just have a lot of turmoil. So it may make things a little more difficult. Now, Calgary added Sharon Govich in the Toffoli deal. He's not going to score like Toffoli. Uh, but they also have $2.4 million in cap space. They dropped by 18 points to 93. Can Calgary bounce back? We're about to find out. Nashville. It would seem like the new general managers decided, well, we've dropped by five points down to 92. This team needs to go through a retool or a reset. He signs O'Reilly, Nyquist, and Luke Shen as, you know, shepherds for the young kids on this team. Tomasino's going to get a, a legit chance to prove himself. And they also have $8,779,135 in cap space. The cap space is there for Nashville to add if they wanted to. I don't think they will, and I, I don't think they should. I think that for Nashville, they should probably leave things as they are if they, they do not have a vision of themselves being in the playoffs. Then, yeah, keep your cap space and weaponize that as much as you can during the season. Vancouver, no cap space for Vancouver. They had 83 points this year, which was a drop of nine. Uh, they did not finish that far out of the playoffs last season, but people don't remember how far you far, you're out. They just remember you're out. For instance, Buffalo. Buffalo's only one point out of the playoffs in the East, but people just look and go, well, they didn't make the playoffs. They're not going to make it next year either. Vancouver, uh, I, I don't know that they can necessarily jump in. So I've got Susie and Cole as the major additions. I know they added Bluger as well. Uh, and there's losses out of the lineup too. And it really is going to depend on Bluger's production as a third-line center because they need production from their bottom six. That's been an issue forever. And Susie and Cole need to be able to just integrate immediately into the lineup and go from there. Vancouver clearly see themselves as not being that far off. They missed the playoffs by 12 points. But again, after talk, it took over. The record was decent. The record... Also reflective of an easier schedule after talk it took over. So they have a tough schedule for the first six weeks of this season. That will tell us a tale. Uh, St. Louis, 81 points. They dropped by 28 points from last year. They have $2,360,238 in cap space. They added Kevin Hayes. There is the possibility St. Louis jumps back in. So it's St. Louis, Nashville, Calgary that fell out. Vegas, Seattle, and Winnipeg replaced them above the playoff line. I don't know that Seattle or Seattle that St. Louis gets back in, but I, it really will probably depend on that start, right? Those first ten games, if they can go seven and three, something like that, St. Louis can get back into it. Uh, they lost some veterans, they've lost some players, but they've still got uh, some some room there to improve, and I think they're going to try to improve the blue line. Uh, obviously, the Hayes trade didn't turn out to be the massive blockbuster that they wanted to make because Krug wouldn't waive his no-trade clause. But there's still the possibility that other trades take place later in the summer. So St. Louis is probably not done and likely to, to look to improve that blue line and maybe get themselves at the cap. I would think that $2.3 million, probably gone by the time we reach October. Uh, Arizona's an interesting one. They improved by 13 points to 70. Uh, they had Kerfoot, they had Bukestad, they also traded for Dursey. Uh, three years outside of the playoffs for them. Uh, 16 million in cap space. A little over. 16,336,189 dollars. Uh, I don't think they're going to be taking on bad contracts. I think that they're, that they're done with that. I think the building has begun. The rebuild, I think, is done. I think now actually building up to make this team better has begun. I would not be surprised to see another 13-point improvement, which would get them into the 83-point mark. Still not a playoff team, but they'll be playing games that matter come February. Uh, if they can get off to a good start, who knows? But for Arizona, uh, this is a team that should be a little bit better. Not a ton better. Probably still not a playoff team. I still have them listed as likely still rebuilding. And the teams beneath them as well. San Jose, 60 points for them, which was a drop of 17. They've added Blackwood and Net. Makes sense. 
the goaltending was an issue last season, and they traded for Anthony Duclair. Four years outside the playoffs for them. Cap space, they have some. It's kind of evil looking. Uh, $6,566,666 according to Cap Friendly. So uh, crank up some Iron Maiden for their entry onto the ice uh, as long as they have that many sixes in their, their, their cap space. But either way, San Jose, yeah, this this feels like it's it's a rebuild. The odd thing being that they're trying to move Carlson, but they don't want to do the retention they're probably going to need to in order to move him. So that's definitely a storyline to keep watching throughout the summer. Uh, Chicago, 59 points. They dropped by nine from the year before. That was by design. Uh, the 59 points equaled Columbus was one ahead of Anaheim, but in the end, they win the draft lottery. Uh, Donato, Perry, Felino are additions. Perry and Felino weren't UFA additions technically, uh, but yeah, they were they were additions via trade that signed with Chicago before they would have gone to free agency. It has been three years since Chicago made the playoffs. They have seventeen million nine hundred sixty five thousand seven hundred and ten dollars in cap space. They're above the floor. They're above the floor. They don't have to worry about the cap floor, and they've still got a ton of space if they want to take on a bad contract. We'll see how things turn out. And then you got Anaheim, fifty eight points. Finished at the bottom of the league, dropped by 18. The sad thing for Anaheim, of course, was it looked like they bottomed out and that they were finally, you know, in the right direction with that 76-point season the year before. But, yeah, no. Now, in the offseason and free agency, they've added Kalorn, they've added Zucker, they've added Gudis. Uh, they've been outside the playoffs for five years. They're not going to be a playoff team this year either, in all likelihood. Uh, but they have $29,873,333 in cap space. That's deceptive. They have to sign Troy Terry and Trevor Zegers but they're going to be fun to watch. All right, there you go. Uh, let me know your thoughts in the comment section below as always. So again, to me, the teams are likely still rebuilding. Ducks, Coyotes, uh, Blackhawks, Canadians, Flyers, and Sharks. Even though Columbus is down there with 59 points, adding Provorov and Severson tells you rebuilding's not really in their plan. When you've signed Johnny Goudreau to a long, expensive contract, it's probably right not to go into a rebuild immediately after that's been signed. But let me know your thoughts. Are Columbus getting it wrong by adding defensemen? Are they further off than they think they are? Or will adding Severson and Provorov and then getting Wierenski back make all the difference? Let me know your thoughts. Don't forget to hit like and subscribe if you're browsing your way through. You just happened upon this video. And one final challenge here. Which team could pull what New Jersey did this year? Which team that's sitting outside the playoffs could have an absolutely fantastic season? And we're not paying attention to them at this stage. Let me know your thoughts. Thank you guys so much for all your support. I will talk to you again soon.